ladies and gentlemen, the Flyers. The Flyers, man. Another win. I mean, another really good game from this team. Uh, as you see, I'm back in the studio. Uh, finally, I was, was dealing with a lot of stuff personally, so um, was kind of in and out, moving back and forth and everything. So um, back here now. Uh, this is the original spot. I know I've been kind of doing them from my basement. It's been on my, my uh, shitty webcam and, and all that, too, so I do apologize for that production-wise, but we're back, and the Flyers... Another really good game against the Blues. Um, I did not think that they were going to win this one. That's four straight wins for this team. I I I don't even know where to begin. Like I'm I'm so like you know like kind of stuck on the fact that they've been playing so well. 24, 14, and six, 54 points. Second in the Metropolitan Division. Two points back of first. They leapfrog the Carolina Hurricanes tonight. They're starting to get a bigger lead on these teams. The Islanders and Penguins, they're now six points ahead. They're up seven points on the New Jersey Devils, and they're right up there with Carolina and the Rangers uh, in the uh, top spot for the uh, the Metro. And This team's playing well. They're playing well. They're 5-3-2 they're, uh, and two in their last 10. Again, four-game win streak, like I mentioned. They're you know really good road team, You know, getting better at home, and I believe eight, eight of their next 10 games now are in Philadelphia. I mean, th- this is where you can really start to kind of take advantage of the schedule. Um, the only bad thing that sucks about this moving forward is the fact that you got the all-star break and you're going to be off for a week and, and, and a little over a week. And um, that's what's going That's what I don't know if it, I'm going to say, I don't know if it concerns me yet because I do think this team is much better than last year. And I do think this team is much better than obviously years past. But it's one of those things where it's like, you know, how are they going to take that momentum from not playing for so long and get right back into it if they're playing so hot right now? That's that's going to be the, the real teller in this one. Um, no Sean Couturier, no Jamie Drysdale, Noah Cates does come back in the lineup. I thought he was very good tonight. And they still find a way to win. I mean, the Lions were, were you know, honestly, I thought it was a, a solid lineup for, for the past, obviously, the past couple of games. It's been this kind of lineup, but they've ran with 11 and 7, so everything's kind of been jumbled. Lines in this one Tippett, Frost, Konechny, Forrester, Law, and Hathaway, Farabee, Paling, and Atkinson, and then Delorier with Cates and Brinkle on the fourth line. So Cates slots in on the fourth line in his first game in 22. Uh, Cam York with Sandheim, Sealer with Walker, Zamula with Ristalainen, and Carter Hart and Nett in this one. Again, like I said, no Coots, no Drysdale. Interesting stat that they had up on the board that I put here. Uh, both Hart and Urson with 10 or more wins. Um, both So both goaltenders, obviously, having 10 wins or more. There's only four teams that have that. Us, Dallas, Boston, and Vegas. Some of the top teams in the league. The Flyers are obviously right up there in the Metro Division as well, and they've been playing some really good hockey. And first period I thought was good. I mean, the Flyers, it was kind of back and forth. The Flyers own majority of the chances. Hathaway had a 2-on-1 chance early. Frost was darting up the ice. I thought Frost had a really good game tonight, <clears throat> and he's looked really good since the Flames game. Um, the guys that you've been wanting to score and the guys that you've needed to put pucks in the net, guys like Tippett, guys like Frost, Forrester gets a goal, Atkinson gets on the board, Farabee has three goals in his past three games, Tippett with four in his past five, uh, Frost, he had a little bit of a point streak, he, I believe he got a point tonight, um, you know, Paling gets on the board tonight, like everyone's chipping in right now, and it's a really good thing to see because without Coots and without Drysdale, who's, you know, obviously he just comes in, he's a big, you know, addition to the power play and everything, and Coots has been such a monster all season, it really does make a lot of sense of kind of where that this team has been, so... Um you know, the, like the Flyers, they've been able to generate chances, and, and they did that in the first period. Lawton had a pass to Forrester, he just tipped it wide. They The last past couple of games, I've really noticed the Flyers have really strived in the middle of the ice. They've been able to attack the teams defensively in the high slot, generate chances from those areas. The Blues would get a power play here. It was a high stick on Hayes. Um, Flyers' pe- uh, penalty kill has now creeped up the first in the NHL. I don't know if it'll drop because the Blues did score a power play goal in this one. Um First time in a late season, and you know, I'm assuming when they say that they mean it past the uh, halfway mark um, since 1989 and 90. That season, uh, where the Flyers were one of the best penalty kills in the league then, and, and still do, you know, as of as of today as well. And um, it, it, really good to see. I mean, obviously the PK has been a bright spot. Penalty kill is top in the uh, 
top in the league. Power play is last. They don't score a power play goal tonight. Um, you know, the, I thought, I thought for most of this game, it felt like the Flyers were just going to win it. Like I didn't, I wasn't too worried about it. Um, it just, it felt like a really solid win. This is three games in Rona. The Flyers have won in the faceoff circle. Um, that's definitely good to see. Uh, the Blues, they get another power play late. It was a uh, board on Cairo from Walker. Good kill. I thought it was a good period overall. The fourth line had a couple of good shifts. The Flyers, they definitely established themselves. They got in the forecheck. They created plays. Had a, Almost had a couple of goals. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, they don't score, but they get one right away in the second period. Scott Lawton scores. Shot from Hathaway right off the pad. Slam dunk for Lawton. I mean, it's just a textbook play. Um, it's something you, you just you love to see it. I mean, this team is just playing this way, man, where they – they get into the dirty areas, they win puck battles, they generate a ton of scoring chances, and then they're able to just make plays from all over the ice. Um, Blues had a couple chances in tight as well. Hart had a couple good saves. There's a ton of plays off the rush from both teams. Flyers do get a power play. There's a chance from Tippett and tight around nine minutes left uh, for that power play. They don't score. They had a couple good looks. Connecting line was very good tonight. Um, I, I think the one thing that I love the most about that line is that you can put – Frost has done this a couple times where you've been able to put him essentially with anyone and he's been able to kind of have instant chemistry with whoever. Like it happened last year when they did it later in the season, they were injured. They put him with Konechny, generated a ton of chances, Tippett as well. He, I mean, him and Tippett have had good chemistry since Tippett became a flyer at the end of, of uh, 2021, 22. But, I mean, my God, I mean, that line was so good tonight. The Blues get a power play. It was a high stick on Hathaway, 1-1. Sunquist scores in tight. Chen with a shot. Hart couldn't squeeze it, and we get a tie game. About a minute or so later, again, I've said this over and over and over and over again. They have a response, and it's not just a response of a fight or a big hit. It's a goal, and it's been a goal most of the year they've been able to generate. Again, like I said, offense from wherever. They generated a ton in the middle of the ice. They drive the net. They get a rebound. Ryan Paling scores on a deflection in tight with six seconds left to make it 2-1 Flyers going into the, in the, the uh, third period. The Blues, they get a, an early goal from Saad. And it was one of those ones where I'm like... <sighs> It's 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 one of the ones where it's like it's either gonna it's gonna change this game in one or two ways. The Flyers are gonna end up having a battle and, and scrap and you know just to get the overtime here because it just felt like at some point I was like I don't know maybe this might go the other way. Um, after that goal, I felt that way, but for most of this game, I was like, eh, you know. After a couple minutes later, I started to feel back to what I said before, which was they're gonna be fine, they're gonna win this one, and they eventually did. But they ended up scoring this one, and I'm like, all right, just try not to make this. A, a dog fight to get the overtime, like get out of this game and, or excuse me, get, get out of this period. Right. And, and try to get the lead back. And they did that. I mean, it was they just went right back to the offense. The fourth line had a chance. Cates, I thought had a very good game. He won a ton of puck battles, good stick positioning. The same thing Cates always really does. I and mean, it wasn't like he didn't do any, he didn't do anything that was like, you know, eye popping. It was just, he was added to the lineup. He did essentially what he's been doing in the flyers. They get a goal late from Owen Tippett, and it, and it was a play where Kinnickney goes to dump it in. It goes off the linesman. It goes right back to him. 3-2. Tippett scores. What a goal. I mean, what a goal. He dangles in, goes backhand, right through Hofer and in, and then Farabee with the empty netter to give the Flyers a 4-2 win in St. Louis. I mean, what else can I say? I mean, this team is playing so well right now. Everyone's gelling together. Everyone, I mean, the guys are stepping up. The power play has been good recently. Um, you know, in five of their last six games, they have a power play goal. The penalty kill first in the NHL going into into tonight, and and you just find ways to win. I mean, you generate a ton of shots. I had, I believe it was forty two or forty one shots on forty two shots on goal, um, and re- really solid game. And again, like I said, the guys that you want to score are scoring. You get goals tonight from multiple guys that. You've, you've not necessarily been looking for, but guys in recent games that have kind of been able to strung this together. Uh, Tippett, obviously, like I mentioned, he gets one. Faraby, he gets one. Paling, Lawton. Like, and it's not even like the you know other guys didn't play well. Cam Atkinson has points in, in his last two games. He had a, you know two goals against the Jets. He has a, a goal, or excuse me, an assist tonight uh, uh, for the Flyers here. I mean, it's just little things like that. And, and, and again, finding ways to win games, battling late. Just winning so many of the little puck battles in the good areas that you want to see. And again, the response is just every game, man. From from the 2-1 goal, uh, or excuse me, the, yeah, the, the 2-1 goal from Paling, and then they get the one from Tippett. Like, 
everyone's chipping in, everyone is scoring, and it's like when you think they're out, they're just not. And that's what I love the most about this team right now is the fact that they are just stringing this along. They keep chugging away. This is game 44. I mean, it, it's it's really nice to see. And, and again, I mean, to be 24-14-6 and six at 44 games played – and um, you know, second in, in in the Metropolitan Division, it's just it's such a good feeling because the last time that I really felt good about this team was probably 2019 20 it was probably the last one and I don't even remember the last time it felt that good about the Flyers before that. Um, I mean, I was a kid to be honest too, but game 44 for this team in that 2019 uh, 20 season. The Flyers had beaten the Washington Capitals on January 8th, 3-2 in Philadelphia. And they had just went on a four-game losing streak. They were 23-15-6. And And this team, like I just mentioned, 24-14-6. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're one game better. One win better than that team up until this point. I mean, it's it's really good to see. I know that team. You know, they they kind of dealt with a bunch of COVID stuff, and you could really say, you know, where that team would have went if COVID doesn't happen, right? But everyone knows that team was good, and I think everybody knows up until that point that team was good, and everyone knew they were good. And and if COVID doesn't happen, that team probably could have went pretty far in the playoffs. But that's obviously a different story for a different day. But I mean, my God, th- this team is just so fun to watch right now, and I'm so excited for for the rest of this year and and you know everything. And it, it's a good time to, to 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 watch this team and to get back invested. And um, it's another one to to follow us at Mayor Media. I mean, we do a ton of stuff with the Flyers, from written content to our official flagship pod, Four Fly Guys, to the videos here that I do on YouTube. Our guy James does them on TikTok. We got. Uh, articles, post game, pre game, stuff in between games, everything. We cover all things Flyers. Uh, we even have a Flyers history account called PHI Heritage. I mean, it's a ton of fun stuff that we do, and um, you know, I, I really hope everybody enjoys it. So, thanks everybody again for all the support. As always, again, back in the studio. So, I appreciate all your support on that. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody again. My name is Chris, and I'll talk to you all again soon. <laughs>